What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Masters of Sport. Here with two-time world champion, co-author of the year. <laughs> That's like my favorite intro. Yeah, I like that one too. It makes <laughs> me feel good. <laughs> this is. I, I want to tell you, this is Caitlin's favorite shirt. Actually. The shirt is yeah. cool. She loves this shirt. She's like, dude, that shirt's mm. really neat. It'd be funny. It'd be if cooler if it was like a pink shirt with all the like the w- album. Why doesn't color. someone with more st- editing skills than me mason make a meme of cream like that but do like some wu-tang thing with it oh that'd be good like the yeah. the cash rules are yeah. like that would there's some way to do it yeah i'm sure i just don't have the brain power right now dane what have you been reading lately talk to me about all these science articles since you've been talking all this which one you got reading right now I, I sort of feel bad because it's one of the ones I talked about last time, which was... The oh, that's all right. The, You're still reading that same there, one? I got another one. Oh, I got one. The I don't remember if I brought this up on air because I have so many conversations about this. The fee five o. Oh. Fiber Fermented Foods Study. I wrote that. When you told me about that one, I brought it up to my wife because she was like... She's into lentils and beans and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, yo, Dane was talking about this one. Check it out. Yeah. Fee Fi Fo is the big one right now. And that's a big, and that was published in Cell, which is a huge, like, microbiology. Uh, like, th- like, I would say the, like, paramount research journal. Um, this is the fiber article, right? Yeah. Fermented foods and fiber and what happens with your microbiome when, when you consume this and what happens. Can you alter uh, your microbiome, so your gut, like like little bugs in your belly that help digest food, and is there a difference between a lean person's gut flora versus and and if I say microbiome or gut flora, they're sort of interchangeable. Um, if is that lean person, do they have different gut flora than uh, obese person? Maybe I need different gut flora to get my six well, pack back. So they they even talk about like um, how. You basically, uh, you it it's possible to change it pretty pretty drastically, and they they actually the, when I was reading it, I thought about uh, fermentation, and when you um, more so mostly when you make beer, like how quickly the grains become spent, like when they're done, and it's essentially within like three or four generations, and that's like how quickly your your gut flora can adapt inside your belly, and so it, it happens quickly, especially if you're eating foods that are higher with resistant starch foods that are complex carbohydrates essentially is where it stems from which is prominent in fiber but also prominent in uh like boiled potatoes and um foods like that and then they sort of study what happens when you into your gut flora when you consume specific fats and and how does this impact uh and protein and then um what happens with with your with your inflammatory markers so they establish what markers we should be worried about um, you really learn this article well yeah well i feel so, like i don't even need to read it now <laughs> so one of the one of the things that i'm doing when i'm studying this stuff is that i'm trying to read it as well as i can i try to take really good notes on it and then I have to give jason and trevor like a 5 minute presentation because i'm i tend to be a little long-winded. No. No. <laughs> so we set a timer. We did it three times so far. Not with FIFO yet, but we've done it three times. Uh, and then we sort of talk about the key points. Okay. So it makes me a little more succinct. Good. Yeah. I'm proud of the two of them. So I think I'm going full steam, fiber, fermented, lean protein. Basically, you get your residual fats from chia seeds and from animal fats. Very nice. Um, and then... And I'm going to go full steam ahead and try and convince all the idiots who believe that Liver King's actually clean and is following the carnivore diet. And that's why it looks like he does. I'm going to try and save all of you morons who <laughs> bought full steam in this guy. I'm going to try and save you so you don't, you know, like, so you're healthy later on in life. I know, I know you got conned by all of his ridiculous marketing, <laughs> just like you get conned by everybody else. So look for me for, for saving your life. You're so nice. <laughs> I'm going to call you an idiot right before I help you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but seriously. You're stupid if you think the liver king's not on drugs. You're dumb. Yeah. Literally. Man, I feel bad. I, 
I just finished that Thinking Fast and Slow book. and Daniel was, Kahneman, you just threw it all out the window. Uh, uh, That's like my life. Dude, I don't that, know about that. I just I read it. Someone gave it to me. I was very appreciative. They just like I was like, oh, I'll read this. That so so that book and there was another one like Into the Fire. I think was another one. I haven't read that one. But they're like that. That book's good, and it's good for someone like me. Oh yeah, you're a gut person. Like yeah. you're system one, your heuristics or whatever. Like you're all about that. Yeah, I, and like I did like that book, and I try. I did a good That's job. That's why your frowning makes you so thoughtful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that. See, that's why you're not as <laughs> as th- like right now. I get you laughing, so I always get you not as thinking as the hard. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, yeah. I, I mean, dude, I think it's if you slow down your thoughts. Yeah. It was maybe not your thoughts, but you slow down your re- your your external reaction is the most important thing yeah, to slow down. It just sounds like you got to take some time with that system too. The problem was I felt a lot of the stuff he had in that book was like math and I'm I don't want to brag but like my brain's decent with like in my head math yeah like I'm not like reach for a calculator right away I'm yeah, like yeah. yo I'm gonna do this type of thing so a lot of the the problems because you're reading one which is slower than just conversation I was able to like work some of the stuff out I'm like oh okay and I have then, a I have a favorite um math problem that's up on the board right square now square root of negative one that's my favorite number square root of negative one uh-huh. yeah sorry wait what is that Four. Uh, 240 two divided by 10 224 or no 240 divided by 20 20 12 yeah that that's what it was uh-huh. trevor and i were talking about it earlier oh good job it's like one of those math problems that's extremely simple but then you're also like second guessing yourself because it's big numbers <laughs> just because there's a zero there yeah. Man. it's easy to get people i feel like you're like billy madison you passed the first grade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. right. let's talk about the quad muscle okay quad quads yeah let's talk about it in my opinion this is only me the teardrop is one of the most baddest looking muscles there is like yeah. someone yeah, who has a cool. teardrop you're just like whoa yeah they're 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 like, jacked yeah how'd that happen like yeah. that's awesome it just looks gnarly like it, it's so s- swole and swell it's funny that you say it because people who have a teardrop quad are very very likely going to be like ideal genetics for a bodybuilder not to get too far into bodybuilding but it's like that big teardrop is almost always going to show up in someone who is extremely hypertrophic and just all around looks good yeah like looks like real good it's one of those muscles it's just like wow lucky you and also too like we're always told like posterior chain right yeah and yeah it's super important yeah but come on, acknowledge the anterior sequence <laughs> yeah. and the quads roll in it, right? Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. So how do we get big, strong quads, Dane? How do we do it? What exercises do we use? Front squat. Front squat. Yeah, front squat, front squat to a box, pause front squats, uh, short lunges, short backwards lunges, like short step, short step. Um Pistol squats are extremely good, uh, high rep, really, really, really high rep, like death reps, like Can, 30 reps. I remember like I this. asked you one time, I was like, I, like programming, you're like, what do you want? I'm like, well, I want my quads to get bigger. You started giving me leg extensions for sets of like 30 yes. into pistol squats. Yes. And like, I would, I, I don't want to say I would cry, but like my Close. quads would just be pumped. Yeah. I, I think, okay, so... I want to come back to what you just said as an anecdotal similar to the bicep discussion that we had in the previous podcast. But um, looking at, I would also argue one of the best ways to get a stupid pump in the quad, you know, high rep pistols, high rep leg extensions, and pulling a sled backwards. You pull a sled backwards and it's like almost entirely quads. How would you mechanically deload that? Like which order would you recommend? Would you start with like the leg extension, which is super easy, but will well, get no, if you I went, like firing completely? I, if I wanted mechanical, I would go pistol, sled, leg extension. Right, but th- 
Pistol has more yeah, joints. Yeah, but I feel like the pistol, though, putting it at the beginning, like, doesn't make it. Okay, you could do this. Instead of a pistol, you do heels elevated Spanish squats for oh, a set dude. of 30, and then you go into this prowler, and then you go into, after the prowl or after the sled, then you go into leg extension. You're dirty, and you just do the leg extension till failure. Till you die. And then you rest like five minutes and do that again. Only need two sets? Yeah, probably. So that's how I get my quads also. They need a lot of volume. What uh, about your hack squat, dude? Don't you love that, too? I hate hack squats because they're so horrible. You're a baby. They're a really good exercise, but I hate them. They broke Jake. They broke Jake so well that he PR'd in his squat. Quads. Quads are the fastest muscle... Um, to go like catabolic to lose muscle mass and this is directly from judy anderson who is one of the greatest uh physiology uh, satellite cell researchers in the world and she she has said you put somebody in a uh you you, you put somebody in a, in a leg brace uh-huh and let's say they go in there for four weeks their quads will shrink within like four three or four days whereas like the rest of their muscles it doesn't happen it, it's a much why later. does this happen I, I don't know if it's like a, like a joint protection or what. I, I don't know. She didn't really specify with that, but yeah. it happens. So they that's why they respond very well to a lot of volume. So, you know, this is where I also believe this, and this is totally anecdotal, so you can mock me and tell Whatever. Me. We're on a podcast. Like yeah. We're, we're okay. not, like, submitting things for journal. <laughs> <laughs> the The leg press, okay, so when I was – when I first started to train outside of like, I would go up and train at the high school. I would train with my dad sometimes at his school, Daniel Boone, but then I would also get on the leg press. I'd ride my bike up to this place called Body Works. And I've told story about stories about Body Works in the past. I bought the tricep machine, if you've watched any of our previous episodes from Body Works. Anyway, I would get on the leg press machine. I'd squat a little bit for like four sets and I would just like half-ass my squats like I'd still do. Baby. But I would get on the leg press machine and I would do like five sets of 15 or like five sets of 20. Because you can load it up with so much weight, too. Yeah, we just caught a mouse. I just heard the mouse trap go off. Oh, I there. heard that, too. I thought it was a weight dropping. And I think I hear it flopping. Anyway. Um, oh, it's so sad. <laughs> sorry, mouse. Um, but you were eating some things. I could see your your droppings around my... <laughs> Chewing on wires <laughs> yeah, on the wire. yet, too. <laughs> anyway, that was the first leg group that taught me how to push harder than biceps so it's okay. like that's the best thing about machines is that you start to learn like oh okay now i feel even more discomfort and i think that you know that that's an important lesson for all of us like who are strength coaches is that that that's tough but then you have to transfer that into Quads are extremely important for drive phase and acceleration and jumping ability. So You're and getting ahead of me, but okay. Okay, sorry. Keep going. No, no, I'll stop. Don't stop. We were just talking about movements to do, and then you were getting into the next thing. I was we're, thinking of that song, uh, Annie Up. Oh, I love that song. From uh, M.O.P. and... There are so many people on that. Busta, Busta Rhymes, Rhymes is on that, too. So I just kept wanting to Annie Up in my mind. Yeah. You know what, Dane? I'm sorry for cutting you off there. <laughs> Let's go into the quads role in sports. Okay. Because so, we get it big, and I was going to get into, like, how do we do get the sarcoplasmic pump, which we were getting into with, like... You you do big-time drop sets yeah. on a leg press? And, and when I say a drop set on a leg press, I mean you hit a set of 10, you take off 100 pounds or 200 pounds. Then you hit another set of 10 or 15. Then you take off another 200 pounds, and then you hit, like I said, 20 or 25. That's how you get that pump. And you can do the same stuff on a sled and on on leg extensions, and that's how you get that, that monster hypertrophy. Now, if we have mobile quads, we should have pretty stable um, – like knee movement, which should be pretty stable as long as you're st still doing your posterior work, but yeah. we're focusing on the anterior sequence. So if I, if I have good mobility in my hips, now I can lengthen my quads even more, especially, you know, around the VMO. And that's where we're going to see that teardrop. But now you, you either want to do short range of motion for the teardrop or really, really deep range of motion, which is why you'll see, 
you know, weightlifters have huge VMOs yeah, and that's squat so deep. Yeah. And it's, it's a, it's, it's really important for knee stability, but that leads to then if I'm trying to cut, um, or if I, if I'm trying to accelerate off the line, all of my transient speed is going to be the start and all the, and the deceleration and the cutting is all going to be based around quads. Okay. And, you know, so that's, that's where it's so important for knee stability. Quads make you fast, everyone. At least when you start, like yeah. they're the big movers to get the for the going. F- yeah, the first twenty yards, for twenty meters. Kick. Yes, absolutely. Nitrous in the quads. That's yeah. what we need, right? Quads and glutes is is key there. Awesome. So, quads play a huge role in sports. Yes, but they're not so naysayed like the biceps and triceps we talked about the other episode. So I think they are a little bit because. There's there's like this there's a little research around the breaking the 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 breaking forces of the quad when you're running at max speed. So there's still some people that will say like, well, the breaking force at top top speed can lead to um, more energy to overcome that breaking force, which then leads to slowing down faster than somebody else. If you're running the hundred meter or the or the two hundred. If I was running the 100 or the 200... So that seems specific, though, to track sports. And that phase of the speed. Of okay. That. Now, if I have an athlete who's a very... And you, and you can see this. You could actually see this um, if you... Nobody really follows indoor track, but I do a little bit. <laughs> this is a really good example, and I would love if Jason could put this into the clip here. Look at... The chick from Poland. Jason just deep stuff. Okay, so her her name's uh, Svoboda. Okay, she's a sixty meter like sixty meter girl all day. Her quads are enormous. Her her quads are just she's jacked. Like you she looks see like her a cyclist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she looks like a sprint cyclist. And and actually, um, even there's a there's a woman from uh, Ireland built very similar to her. But Svoboda just beat and set an indoor meeting record. Uh, she just beat Elaine Thompson Hera, who is the best sprinter, essentially best female sprinter, I believe, of all time. 100, 200 meter Olympic champ two times. And so has the hardware to prove it. Yes, she is the best. Now, the difference is Elaine Thompson has extremely long legs and is extremely explosive in, in her hamstrings, so she holds better form later on in a race. Gotcha. Svoboda is like a subpar 100-meter girl. Like she's She'll make it to the quarters, maybe. I, I'd have to look if she... Yeah, only made, like top 24 in the world. Just I don't, I don't even know if she made... I don't know if she made the semis in Tokyo. I would oh, have to wow, check that. Oh, wow, she's an Olympic athlete. Just, yeah. You know, <laughs> mediocre at best. Where I'm going with this <laughs> is that a lot of people will take that research and say, well, you know, based off of this... Uh, Quads slow you down. And my, I'll apply it to yeah. other sports. Right. Gotcha. My argument would be Elaine Thompson, you know, she's the best ever, could benefit from a little more quad training to improve her start. Not really, but theoretically, yes. Because her her um her advantages are, are after sixty. Sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, she's she right. smashes people. She has people. that like 40% of the race still left. Yeah. And, and you can actually, if you watch the indoor race that, that just happened um, in Europe, you can actually see Svoboda. St- st- she's starting to get hawked down. Yes. Yeah, so you can sort of see here, like. Um, oh, wow. She's way out in front. No, this isn't. This isn't the race. That, that's, uh, that's not the race. Whatever. She's still that, crushed. That, it's, it's later in this clip, I think. That crew. Because it was tight. It was tight between Hera and... Uh, that wasn't even... She, this, is, this is her national record. This, was this just like two days ago? Yes. Whoa. She uh, sh- it's, smoked that group, though. Keep going, wait, go a little deeper because I think there's... Is Hera in this race? Because it was tighter than that. No. She, whatever. This one, she destroyed. Yeah, whoever. You, but you see her, her, her build. Look Those at her quads. on just the audio, she has like a left sleeve almost but not quite jason go to huge go to the world athletics instagram she's already in the lead yeah look at that start and then she opens it she's at least like and the chick the chick who's over to her left cam bungie to her left 
um, dude, she's she she won the Diamond League in the two hundred in Eugene. She's literally one. She's a top six women sprinter in the world, and she just got lit up because the sixty is a different game. The sixty is much similar. It what you see there, that's going to transfer over to. To so the you're world saying, of sports. like, if you're playing an open skill sport, you're probably better off if Looking you're like going to run in track and field, look like her, or run the 60 type of thing. Yeah, and, and and that goes into if I'm training someone, you know, again, somebody who's longer legged, I want to work their quads further out from their peak. Yeah, this is the one right here. This is the one that – that's oh, wow, where – that close. Yeah, so that's the one where you can see two – I mean, just look how yoked she is. And then if they show Thompson, Hera, um, her build is just so drastically different. She's to the left there, to the left of her. There. Wow. And you could see she started to – she's uh, yeah, she, Hera started to catch her, but it's 60 meters. It's short. It's over already. Yeah, so to transfer over – if I was training sprinters, I would base it off of all right. How good? How what's their build? What's their leg length? And someone like Svoboda, as you know, probably most of her training, I would try to focus on her posterior chain. But as we get into a peaking point, we've got to go to where she's strong. I got gotcha. you. So, I, I think that the quads. Yeah, you can see she's starting to get hawked there, but it doesn't matter because she just she just broke. You know, uh, she just broke the meat record. Won. won money. Um, yeah, she's good. So, so we'll see. Uh, it's bad that I, what's bad. Uh, it's bad that sometimes I think some of these dude, she might be on drugs. I don't know. Oh, it's I, cause she's it, not American. No, Hera is not American. She's Jamaican. Oh. No, I thought you were talking about Swoboda. Sorry. Uh, let's talk about she's Polish. Yeah. That's not, I mean, it'd American. be like, it'd be like one. It's, even the Americans on drugs aren't on drugs. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't one of them just get popped? Yes. Yeah. Um, let's talk about quads and co-contractions. Okay. The With knee the drunk. Drink. Yeah. And just and, or and wherever. The like and the hip. And the hip. Yeah. The anterior sequence, if you will, right? Yeah. Because that's how, what it boils down to. I, I think... Um, well, are you going to be talking about are – you, are you saying – You're going to be talking. I'm asking questions. Please. I would say it's going to be hamstrings and quads. All right, the so knee. they're working together with yeah, the knee. Yeah, And – Nordic curls, everybody. Yeah, Nordic Nordic hamstring curls. In a, I, All dads out there listening, you're six-year-old. Start them doing the, Nordic curls. Keep them going. Now and never stop. Yeah. If you want an athlete – That's what you got to do. Make it happen. Yep, absolutely. Especially a shorter-legged kid. Especially yeah. a shorter leg kid, you've got to hammer that home. And and with women, it's even more so because it'll drastically decrease any ACL issues because that's where we're seeing. I mean, there's so much research on um, glute, hamstring, quad, all related to the stability of your knee. And that gotcha. the stability of your knee, if it's not stable and you don't have the skill to co-contract, that's when then when we see catastrophic injuries yeah, like here that. Here comes trauma. Yeah, exactly. It's lurking. Yeah. Here comes so the baseball bat. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> so being able to coordinate everything together at a high speed, like cutting, um, you know, when you run, plant, and cut somewhere, it, it, that can even be learned when you're learning how to clean, you know, or yeah. snatch. So, man. That's extremely important. And that's like where we're going next actually next month, that's where we're going with some of our uh some of our research. Sweet. Co activation. We're gonna get smarter. Yeah. The brain's gonna expand. Co activation slash co contraction. Upgrade that gray matter because someday it may matter. Yeah, actually we were talking about this uh myelin sheathing today and I was thinking about gray matter when we we, we become more rigid as we age because we're losing that myelin sheathing. Uh oh. That's from I got that from the talent code. Oh, I haven't read that one. That's pretty good. It's it's like an easy read. Yeah. I should read more books. <laughs> more difficult. Stop reading these Supreme Court cases. The opinions Shut like up. Reading. Those things are brutal. They're silly. Dude, they're so well, it's just silly how I don't want to get into it. Yeah, what, do we have any questions here? We do have questions. Oh, you just got it. 
Did you, you don't even have the like script in front of you, like the outline, <laughs> and you literally answered my next question, the role in aging and strength. Were you like eyeballing it from there? No. How am I going to eyeball it from here? I don't know how. And then you just <laughs> have it. You're psych- it was the blue heron, the psychic abilities. <laughs> that was one good thing you did, too. Yeah. Dude, I love blue herons. Yeah. I love them. Well, we saw it going Yeah, down. when we were driving yeah. there. Dude, I always think they're like the modern-day pterodactyls. Dude, they're I, huge. I, I went to Jurassic Park. In my Dude, brain. they are huge. You were like, people like eagles are huge. Dude, yeah. eagles are huge. Don't get me wrong, they're enormous. But the blue blue herons are way bigger. Like, they're like don't mess with me. Yeah, they're huge. Man, it was probably lucky with them. We got to see one just driving. Like uh, we see them a lot around here. Oh, actually, we're, we're lucky. We're sorry. fortunate. <laughs> I don't see them as often as you. <laughs> All right, audience questions. Train your quads, kids. Yeah, definitely. Everybody. And try if you want. Try some of those crazy bodybuilding things. Yeah, make it happen. Yeah. Comment. Yeah. Tell yeah. us how awful it was. <laughs> that could be a reels I make show, tomorrow. Show us your tears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. That would be a good one. That's a good that's I'm training tears today in yeah. my quad. <laughs> and then have so like the Mike, the Michael Jordan crying <laughs> yeah. meme there with it all the time. That'd be awesome. <laughs> all right. You two, Michael Dillard. When should I do jump squats or Depth lift squats at the end of a workout or the beginning? Beginning. Beginning of a workout. Beginning. Yeah. When you start, buddy. All right. L.A. Space Boy. Oh, nice name. Yeah. I'm thinking of L.A. Space Boy woman. <laughs> LA woman. Uh, yeah. Did I ever tell you when I, I was gave about Space Man 3 records away? Did he kill you? He was really mad at me. It's funny because I think I've said this before. My dad never liked the doors, but. Uh, he had a bunch of them. I gave a few away because they weren't like being yeah. played and he's like i can't believe you did that i was like my bad you don't use yeah. <laughs> ah, next christmas i know what i'm getting yeah. dad uh, brand yeah. new Do- doors album that he still won't play yeah. but he'll feel well, better he only plays his rolling stones album <laughs> it's classic <laughs> anyway la space boy three um ever since matt frazier crossfit athlete Made a claim about taking beta alanine before his training competition gives him a third lung. What's your thoughts, and has it helped you with your cardio and lactic acid? Yeah, I love beta alanine. That's why I designed a pre-workout stampede that has five grams of beta alanine in it. I love it. I think it's fantastic. It's it's. There's some people that will talk negatively about it, but I think, one, the placebo effect of feeling the tingles helps a lot of people. It hurts a lot of people, but it also helps a lot of people that have the the feeling of association. Now they start to associate that feeling with competition or with training and with focus. So that placebo effect is good. But then also, uh, actually, Trevor's one professor at Messiah has a ton of research on um, – on loading it and that's the one thing i would recommend four to five days a week loading beta alanine so that you saturate your muscles long term and and they have they've done a lot of research on on rowing capacity and seeing that drastically uh improve over time as the saturation point increases uh, i always tell wrestlers to take that you know five grams you know about an hour before or a half hour before like a big if you're in a tournament in the finals match like that's a really good it's really good. It's it's great, and a lot of bodybuilders are successful with it as well. Beta alanine, everyone. Yeah, some people. I know Derek from More Plates, More Dates talks negatively about it, but I I don't think it's warranted. Well, Matt Frazier says it's a third lung, and, and that guy legit has endurance. A third lung. Yeah. Like, and he also, I mean, that's that was his weak point, and and and. That was his big weak point coming up, and then they basically sat there and they're like, "All right, every day you got to be on a bike, you got to be on the rower, or you got to be running every single day." And that was like one of the main points of where he became so dominant, because his strength was already there, and he was doing that and still squatting like five forty. Yeah, well, when he would compete in the, I don't. Sometimes I don't know if he could have squatted more or if he was like, "That's what it I was." His, yeah, squat. yeah. Like, that, I would think it's probably that wise with him sometimes. Like, yeah. Because why overdo it? Like, if yeah, you went by a pound, to. you still get first place. You don't yep. need to, like, crush everyone with it. So take your beta alanine, uh, smash your quads, tear and drops. always train your teardrops. Yeah. Until next time. Cry about it. <laughs> Peace. Later.